Welcome. The Adventurer's Guild told me to expect you to. It's nice to meet you, Osfond. We'd like to ask you about something. I see. So, Catherine's the one who sent you this way. Ha! <laughs> it's true that the Aramites' network is vast, but even I can't help you meet the Dendro Archon. Wait, seriously? That's it? Ha <laughs> Afraid so. The Aramites aren't terribly religious, so we don't know much about divinities. As far as the Akasha goes, we can access even less than you. We originally came from the desert. The gods there died off long ago. Since those days, we've used our own two hands to carve out a living. We don't beg gods for their aid. It isn't just us, though. If you ask me, I think most in Sumeru aren't interested in lesser lord Kusanali. Oh? Why is that? Just take the Academia, for example. They're the ones who truly rule Sumeru. Although they believe in gods, most of them only care for the late, greater Lord Rugadavada. In their eyes, she was the one who founded Sumeru and gifted us with the Akasha. Lesser Lord Kusanali just happened to inherit her legacy. Because of the Academia's influence, most citizens are more familiar with Greater Lord Rukadavada and hold her in greater esteem. Not to mention that Lesser Lord Kusanali never makes an appearance, and the Academia never announces anything about her. As far as the people of Sumeru are concerned, she's just a god that exists. And that's all. Really? After hearing all of that, Paimon sort of feels bad for Lesser Lord Kusanali. Ha! <laughs> but who knows? We're all just guessing when it comes down to it. Besides, I'm sure the God of Wisdom doesn't worry about her reputation among people like us. All right. Well, thanks for the info, Osfond. <laughs> no problem. Always happy to help out the Adventurer's Guild. Uh, is there a new <sighs> Seems Osfond was right about most people's attitudes here. Not only are they not interested in the Dendro Archon, they even say stuff like, If the Akasha doesn't think I should know, then I don't need to know about it. We've been asking for information non-stop ever since we got to Sumeru. But the harder we try, the more helpless everything seems. Isn't there at least one person in this entire city who cares about Lesser Lord Kusanali? Oh, uh, you two are interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali? Huh? Who are you? From the sound of it, you two are outlanders who recently arrived here. You've been asking around for information on Lesser Lord Kusanali, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Dunyarzad, one of Lesser Lord Kusanali's faithful followers. Whoa, really? Then do you know how we can meet with her? I'm afraid I can't help you with that. But your conversation earlier did happen to remind me of a legend about the Dendro Archon. Sure. It goes like this. Long, long ago, there was a man who heard a prophecy. It predicted that a great calamity was about to befall him. Panicked by what he heard, the man sought out the Dendro Archon in hopes that she would bless him, with the wisdom to help him escape his predicament. The man journeyed across deserts and through rainforests, and experienced tribulations of every kind. However, he still couldn't find any trace of the Dendro Archon. In despair, he thought, alas, the Archon has abandoned me. He then had no choice but to sorrowfully resign to his fate. A 
Okay. And then what happened? And then... the calamity came. But to his own surprise, the man felt somehow emboldened by the trials of his journey. By relying on his own strength, he managed to overcome the adversity. At that moment, a bird perched upon his shoulder. This bird was, in fact, an avatar of the Dendro Archon. She said, Oh, Archon Seeker, do you now understand? She and her wisdom have long been found by you. Along your journey, we were in every flower and blade of grass, every ray of sparkling sun and every breath of dancing wind. So long as you continue to think and ponder, will be wherever you go. Yeah, thanks for the story! Paimon feels all warm and fuzzy inside after that. <laughs> uh, in a way, it seems like this story is also one of the Dendro Archon's avatars. Dunyarzad, since you worship Lesser Lord Kusanali, can you tell us anything else about her? Of course. So did you two know that, uh... uh I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but it seems something's come up now. Uh, let's chat another day. you seen a brown-haired girl wearing a purple top and a long blue dress? We're looking for her. Uh, did she have bandages wrapped around her wrists? Yes, that's her. Did you see which direction she went? Uh, yeah, she went that way. Quick, after her! You too. Oh, you startled me there. 
You can relax now. We threw those people looking for you off the trail. Uh, really? Oh, thank you so much. Unfortunately, I believe there's still more of them out there looking for me. Uh-oh. Looks like there are some coming this way. Huh? More of them? Then what are we standing here for? Run! No, wait, I... Uh... My body isn't in the best shape. Uh, it's difficult for me to run. Okay, sounds good. There's a tavern on the other side of the port we can go to. They probably wouldn't expect me to hide in a place like that. Alright, let's move out. Stay behind us. We'll keep an eye out for anyone looking for you. We made it. Oh, they shouldn't be able to find us now. Wait, stand down, Dia. My lady, who are these two? They're travelers that I met on the street just a moment ago. They happened to notice that you were all searching for me, so they helped me hide. I see. In that case, you two should scram. There's nothing here for you. Wait a sec! Who the heck are you? And why are you shooing us away? I'm Miss Dunyarzad's bodyguard, here to see that she returns home safe and sound. <sighs> My lady, let's get going. You've been gone for so long that your parents are worrying themselves sick. And if I refuse to go with you? It'd be easier for the both of us if you cooperated. But if you insist on not going, then I'll have to carry you like a sack of potatoes. Hey! Dunyarzad already said she doesn't want to go back! Why are you still pushing her? Stay out of this. You don't understand the situation. Sorry, my lady. Even though I'm your bodyguard, your parents are my employers. I have to answer to them. How much? Wait, what? How much mora do I have to pay you to become your employer? So you never listen to my parents ever again. Double? A triple? Give me some time and I'll get that much. My lady, this isn't about mora. I don't know what you think of us Aramites, but let me say this. I like mora, but I'll never go against my principles. That's why I'm here looking for you. Sure, it's an order from my employer, but my conscience was also telling me it's the right thing to do. And knowing your health, carelessly running around like this is gonna hurt ya. For the sake of those who love you, don't be stubborn. No, you're wrong! I'm aware of my limits, and I know what I'm doing. Honestly, the only people being stubborn right now are my parents. And they know perfectly well that it makes no difference if I'm at home or not. I still won't accept reality. And every time I bring this up, they just change the subject. Dia, you've been living with us a long time already. This should be old news to you. <sighs> Dia, I know it hasn't been easy for mother and father, and I'm grateful for everything they've done for me. But there's someone else in this world I'm also grateful to. Because she saved me. The love I have for her is the same I have for my parents. 
This is my life and my last chance. So I want to do something meaningful. My lady, are you sure what you're doing now is meaningful? Yes, I'm sure. At least, it is to me. <sighs> Fine, I won't ask you to return home anymore. But let me make something very clear. I'm only doing this because I respect your determination, not because I agree with you. Thank you, Dia. <sighs> Sorry for being so rude just now. My nerves were acting up. And I even brought up your payment in such an offensive way. Uh, don't worry about it, my lady. I did say that I like Mora. Besides, that's our next topic of conversation. Today's little excursion caused such a ruckus that every single bodyguard at the estate was deployed. It wouldn't be easy to hide things from your old man. Since this definitely won't be your last escapade, here's a little tip. You should at least make it look like your room and things are still in order when you leave. Also, you'll need someone to cover you for when you're out and about. So, I'll let you hire me, my lady. This way, everyone wins. As for the pay, let's say mm, half of what your father pays me. We can settle the bill when we return to the estate. Okay, deal. Yay! Looks like they've reached an understanding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine, really. I, I just feel a little tired now that things have calmed down. <sighs> My lady, stop trying to look tough. We're already in a tavern, so let's rest up and grab some grub. I'm sorry for worrying you two. If you don't mind, I'd like for you to join us. Sure! After you rest up, we want to hear more about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Ha! Well, if it isn't Dia, haven't seen you in nearly half a year. Word on the street is that you're a bodyguard for the Homayani family now. <laughs> Don't you find that kind of work boring? Nah, you get used to it. How about a menu over here? You got it, huh? Isn't this little Miss Homayani herself? <laughs> we don't get to serve personages like you very often. We'll be sure to prepare our very best. Thank you, sir, but there's no need. I don't have a lot of mora on me, and I really ought to save as much as I can. Uh, but please bring these two the best food you have. They're my new friends, so I want to be a good host for them. about our coconut charcoal cakes. They're our signature snack, and they run cheap. Look, other customers over there are eating some now. Uh, they look kind of burnt and dry. Uh, by my will pass. Dunyar 
Azad. We asked a lot of people when we first arrived, and almost nobody was interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali. So, what made you want to follow her? Well, remember when you asked me if I knew how to meet the Dendro Archon? Even though I don't know how, I think I've actually seen her before. Huh? Really? Yes, it was when I was a child. At the time, my illness had kept me bedridden for the better part of a year. I was stuck inside and couldn't make any friends, and my parents did their best to find treatments for me. But even then, the Akasha didn't have any helpful information. My younger self no longer had any hopes or dreams. One flare-up was so bad that I was in a semi-conscious state for several days. Then one night, I woke up alone in my room. I was terrified. My body was paralyzed. Even if I cried, there was no sound. At that moment, an ethereal voice spoke in my mind. Dunyarzad, don't be scared. You don't have to cry. Dunyarzad, don't be scared. You don't have to cry. <gasps> Who are you? How do you know my name? Um, how do I explain this? You might not be able to understand, but actually, I know everything about you. Really? Of course. I know that you're scared of thunder, that you hate taking medicine every morning, and that you love counting the petals on your mom's skirt. Wow, you really do know everything. Junior is odd. Is there anything you want? Want? Not really. I, I can't go anywhere or do anything. Huh? But aren't you a child? All children have wishes. Tell me what you want, and maybe I can make it happen. But uh, can you make my illness go away? Oh. I'm sorry, but I'm not powerful enough to do that right now. Then, can you be my friend? After that, the voice said, Okay, I'll be your friend. Although my body was suffering during those days, that voice encouraged me and told me many wondrous things. Beyond my window was the flourishing Sumeru city. Beyond the city was a lush rainforest. And beyond that was the wall of Samiel, deserts, and all of Tevat. Once I finally made it through that bout of illness, I couldn't hear that voice anymore. I told my mother about it, but she said that I must have been dreaming. But I know that that voice wasn't a figment of my imagination. Before that, I had never heard of Tevat. Yes, for sure. If it weren't for that voice, I would have never grown curious about the outside world, nor would I have learned how to read and enjoy so many books. That voice sparked a desire for wisdom. It had to have been the Dendro Archon. I've been hoping for a chance to repay her kindness. In fact, I was running around today to help prepare the Subzerus Festival for her. What's the Subzerus Festival? It's Lesser Lord Cusinelli's birthday, which was the day that she was found by the sages. It's actually an old holiday that originally celebrated Greater Lord Rukadavata's birthday. When she passed away, the holiday eventually became a celebration of the Lesser Lord's birthday. I heard everyone was overjoyed when they welcomed her back to Sumeru. In those days, the festival was a huge deal. But because of the academia's influence, people have gradually lost interest in the festival. The Academia actively participates in Sumeru's many holidays dedicated to Greater Lord Rukadavata. But when it comes to the Subzerus Festival, forget any funding. 
They practically act like it doesn't exist. Maybe they see Lesser Lord Kusanali's birth as confirmation of Greater Lord Rukadavata's death, so they're reluctant to celebrate it. Aww, but that's awful! It is. It's absolutely terrible. Sure, the Greater Lord founded Sumeru, but hasn't Lesser Lord Kusanali been the one quietly protecting us for the past few hundred years? <clears throat> Just remember that we're still out in public. Don't get too carried away now. I know that people over by the Grand Bazaar still hold the sub Festival to this day. But I hadn't met any of them before, so I was never able to contribute. But recently, I made a friend there who also follows Lesser Lord Kusanali. I gave her my savings because I want her to throw a wonderful festival this year. That's the least I could do for Lesser Lord Kusanali. Hold on, my lady, does this friend happen to be Nilu, the one who sends flowers to the estate? Yes, that's her. Hmm, I saw her leaving the other day with a nervous look on her face. It seemed like she was hiding something in her arms. Did you give her something? Uh, yes. Uh, initially, I didn't have much more prepared, so I had Nilu sell one of my skirts. I've agreed with Nilu to meet up at the Grand Bazaar today, and see how things are coming along. Dia, would you accompany me? Sure, that's quite the trip though. I'll carry you. No, that would be too much, even for you. You might as well just accept the lift. If I let you walk, who knows how long it'll take us. And if anything happens to you, then I'd really never hear the end of it from your father. But of course, Nilu will be thrilled to hear there are more people interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali.